Thanks for joining us once again, everyone. I'm Lynn Doyle. This is It's Your Call. And our topic, disappearing privacy. You probably agree with me that it doesn't seem like we as a society value privacy as much as perhaps we used to. We put everything out there for the world to see. Now, some people absolutely love that. They say, I have no secrets. It makes no difference to me. I've done nothing I'm ashamed of. I'm fine with it. Other people, though, say, I would still like to have some privacy. Our experts telling us here some of the ways that we might be able to do that. And while we've talked about some of the fears and the dangers, now let's let's be proactive and, and tell people how they can make your job a little tougher. Well, it used to be that in order, when all this, when there was no internet, what we would do is, doing background investigations, we would literally take their trash and we'd separate the refuge from the information. And again, we know we're not going to find bank statements on an asset investigation, but what we're looking for is the envelope the particular bank that, that was sent to that house and from there through subpoena power then we can start developing a case. So you're telling me today you could still go through our trash? I can if it's on a, sh it's, it's, you could argue it both ways. There's certainly people who could sit on this panel and say no, no, no. But the answer is yes, if, if I'm not going on to your private property. Yeah, what he's talking about, it's actually the same rule that applies to law enforcement. And for a long time, as shocked as you may look, Lynn, the rule that law enforcement has been allowed to go through your trash has been around for a long time and long before the Internet. Yes, there is a difference between the regular space on the street and uh, what they call the curtilage, which is something so closely connected to your home uh, that it's part of the home. But be aware that law enforcement going through your trash is nothing new. Okay, so, <laughs> note to self, keep my trash Shred. shredded and Shred. on my own property. And also, if private investigators are brought in, Lynn, there's usually a pre-existing case. And when we can't answer the questions in the way that we just talked about, we'll put that person under surveillance. And we'll keep an eye on them, especially if it's a civil defense case. And our job there, Lynn, is just to get them on tape as much as possible, let the defense experts and the medical people say yay or nay as to whether or not it's consistent with the claim. But you know, I'm not talking about people that are involved in a legal situation. I'm just talking about people who are living their lives every day and don't necessarily you know, want how much they're paying for their house to be out there. There's really no recourse for them? Well, they need to be careful about what they're doing. As we said, they need to shred any documents that they have when they're there. They need to be careful about what they're doing online. I mean, people sign up for surveys or, you know, affinity cards, say the local drug store or um, the department store or something. Something, uh, they fill out a form and they're giving, you know, how much money they make, right. um, you know, all kinds of information. If, if you don't want that disclosed, it's just not necessary for you to do that when you fill out warranty cards and surveys and all. So be careful there. Be careful on social media sites. See what information they want from you. Check your privacy settings. Okay. Um, the one thing I, I've been diligent about not giving out my telephone number only because I haven't wanted unwanted solicited phone calls and I've signed up for the do not call so the telemarketers leave me alone. It never occurred to me when I'm trying to get a special offer or anything like that, that the information they're taking it, can, can you request that it not be sold or not be shared? Is there anything legal that, that we could do to protect ourselves? Well, actually, a great example is when I was asked to be on this show just uh, in the last 24 hours, I went to the website that we were talking about earlier. Uh, I looked for a way to opt out to take myself off. I sent them a fax. I tried to use the most analog, old-fashioned method possible. <laughs> Within an hour, they got back to me and said, your profile has now been deleted. Now, that raises the question, is it, does it create an affirmative obligation on everybody to go out there and seek out all these sites and start sending faxes all over the place? I don't know. Maybe that's the price of living in the Internet age where I can map quest something and, and have the convenience of ordering my food online and having it there in 30 minutes. Now, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I did the same thing. I opted out and I told them I did not want um, my information to be available for sale. I have no idea how many other sites are out there, so I should really take it upon myself and find out who else has information about me, right? Absolutely, but there's things that happened in life that you can't change. So if there's <laughs> yes, a situation <laughs> where you have a criminal arrest history, you've been involved in a civil action case, that's all gonna come up. Okay. Even if it's a situation, Lynn, where you move from one address to another, that forwarding address is available through Freedom of Information. Okay, but I don't have to make it easy for anybody exactly. who's looking out, and you don't either. And thanks to you guys, we all have a little bit more ammunition to arm ourselves with in order to keep privacy here at home. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you the next time.